Welcome to Young Business Professionals. It's still me, Felix, and I hope you all fine today. I would like to give you further insight into the PPEP process. Therefore, we will take a look today on the meaning of the PPEP level one. The target is to give you a general understanding of that term in a few minutes. If you're interested in increasing your automotive knowledge, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. You may also check out our Facebook page through which we would like to create a community that shall support each other growing everybody's knowledge. Let me once again start with a short introduction about the general purpose of PPEP before we are touching PPEP level one more in detail. The abbreviation PPEP stands for Production Part Approval Process. This is a process that is pretty common applied in automotive industries, but which is also used in other industries. The process is requested by customers, often automotive OEM from their suppliers that are developing and implementing new products. It is as well part of the APQP process. We have already uploaded a video that is explaining APQP in detail. You may find the link therefore now up on the right. The purpose of providing a PPEP documentation to the customer is to approve the originally defined product requirements by producing samples through the newly implemented serial production. There are different documentation levels that I would like to introduce to you now. There's level one, which includes a part submission warrant, the so-called PSW, that has to be submitted to the customer. There's level two that includes the PSW, product samples and limited supporting data. There's level three that requires to submit the PSW, product samples and a complete set of supporting data. There's level four that requires to submit a PSW and other requirements as defined by the customer. And in addition, there is also level five that requires to submit the PSW with product samples and to provide a on-site review to the complete supporting data for the customer in the manufacturer's location. Depending on the request of the customer and the necessity, a specific level for the product is being defined. In case a fully new product is being developed, people level three is the common choice. In case we are talking about another product variant at which just a new part number is being implemented, it's pretty often the case that level one or two is sufficient. And now let's take a more detailed look on PPEP level one. On this slide, you can see the full PPEP scope and um, now framed in orange, I'm highlighting the mandatory components for a PPAP level one. As you can see, a PPAP level one is just requiring the part submission warrant. On the other hand, a appearance approval report is required in theory. All the other ingredients that are listed on this slide can be left out for a PPAP level one. Due to the fact that often just the cover sheet needs to be provided, the sampling according to level one is also called cover sheet sampling. The PSW form is summarizing all information that are being submitted with the PPAP. It includes information about the reason of the submission, general information about the component, as well as an area where the customer is declaring the part is fulfilling agreed requirements. And of course, also an area where the customer needs to reconfirm that. Alternatively, of course, customer can also mark the rejection of the product on the cover sheet or place comments on this document. The appearance approval report is being used for components of which optical appearance matters and is, for instance, described within the product requirements. A good example is or are components that are assembled in the inner area of the car where color matching, texture and gloss and level might be pretty important facts to be checked for these components. Typically, PPEP level one is applied in cases in which just minor changes are being performed with regard to the product. These changes might be that small that the risk is low and the effort of creating a full bunch of paperwork is not required. And a good example could be the implementation of a product variant 
with a very small scope of change. A PPAP level one sampling could be required as well in case additional production plans of the customer might be added to the delivery scope for a product that has already been PPAP fully before. Or already approved components shall be used in additional car platforms. Now let's take a look on to an example of a so-called PSW. We will check all chapters of the PSW now step by step. On top of the sheet, some general information need to be filled, starting with part name, customer part number, drawing number, that might be also the same as the part number, on the right side, you may find the supplier part number. In addition, information with regard to the engineering change level have to be added. For instance, a change level C with a corresponding date of change on the right side. Um, in addition, safety relevance um, or governmental relevance need to be marked. It's also important to mention here the PO number of the PPAP documentation. Um, respectively of the PPAP samples that have been ordered and as well as the weight of the samples. And you may see here on the right side. Below also the number of the used Checking aid is listed. This could be a gauge, a cubing, for instance, and also the corresponding change level is being added there. So far, with regard to the upper area of the PSW, later on in this area, um, address information of the PPAPing company and the receiver will be added to the sheet. Don't forget to add the contact person. After that, material reporting related information uh, have to be added. Are there critical substances included into the product and have they been reported? Did you create the IMDS entry and what is the corresponding number therefore? Moreover, it has to be mentioned that components have been marked according to the ISO marking standards. Then the reason for the submission needs to be marked. Um, this could be an initial submission, an engineering change, tooling transfer, replacement or refurbishment, collection of or correction of some discrepancies. Uh, tooling could have been inactive for more than a year, so this might be also a reason uh, for submission. A change to another design or material, sub-supplier change, a change in the process of how to produce the part, um, a change of the location of the product or the part might be produced at an additional location and other reasons that might be specified here. After that, the requested and agreed PPAP level needs to be described and needs to be tickled here in case our, in our case, uh, level one would need to be tickled in the area called um, submission results and declaration. The supplier is announcing which reports will be provided and is declaring that the samples that he is pr presenting have been made according to the PIPA process. Manual fourth edition requirements. Also, the overall cycle time of these samples has to be noted as well as um, further facts. And finally, there is also um, an there is also a comment section for necessary descriptions that would be that would um, 
There is also a comment section for necessary descriptions that would need to be added and the availability of tooling tags in order to mark the property of the customer needs to be confirmed. So then the PPAP submitter has to sign and has to add its credentials in the section here. And finally, there is also an area which has to be filled by the customer in which he is declaring if the documentation is going to be approved, rejected or here is written other but probably this is also available in order to address a limited or yeah, a limited approval. And of course customer contact information should be filled down below here as well. I added another slide with a few more important things that should be considered with regard to all PPAP procedures. Please be aware that many customers are having separate and own formats that have to be filled. They have their own PSW forms, their own control plan forms or FMEA headers. So please get in touch with the customer early enough before submission in order to clarify which formats should be used. It's a pity if you might recognize that after you have already submitted the documentation and then you need to rework it again. In addition, please get in touch with the customers early as possible to clarify the PPAP scope and the PPAP level. It is really helpful to sign a PPAP scope agreement in the early phases of a project maybe in phase one or two, but definitely earlier than in APQP phase three and four of the project, as this is definitely too late. Clarify also the number of samples, um, as especially if several multi-cavity tools are used, a high number of samples might be required. Well, that was a short introduction into PPAP level one and some insight into a PSW sheet. Of course, these PSWs might or may also look slightly different depending on your internal standards and different customer standards. Anyhow, I guess this was giving you at least a rough idea on what we are talking about. In case you're interested in further topics, leave a comment below and let me know what you're interested in and I will try to do my best to do another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm looking forward for your likes and your feedback below the video. Please subscribe to my channel to not miss further updates. Please feel free to also join our Facebook community. You will find the link down below the video. Have a great day.